Hey guys, welcome back to Blaze TV. It's Ed Kimberley and Stu Coles, as always. And our very special guest on uh, today's episode, new Blaze forward, Ryan Penny. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much, firstly, for taking a little bit of time out of your day to, uh, to do this with us. And hey, it's great to meet you. Yeah, you as well. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. No, no, no. Um, the, honestly, the pleasure is all ours. So I think the, me and Stu and you were just chatting before um, before we got going here about it. And the one one of the good things uh, after this whole crazy 18 months is that these these whole Zoom calls with the players, we get to know you guys a little bit better before you uh, you get over here. So, um, yeah, no, I've, I've really enjoyed these so far. So I'm kind of I've been looking forward to this a week, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I kind of, as always, just like to dive in really early on in your career, if that's OK. And uh uh, and talk a little bit about junior because uh, when you got drafted into the queue uh, you were with Moncton right and that's not too far from where you grew up in Nova Scotia yeah exactly so um, you know I was pretty lucky I had uh, I had a lot of family at a lot of games for uh, for three years and um, you know it was uh, two and a half hours away from home and um, got to you know play Halifax uh, 10 times a year. So it was uh, <laughs> definitely a treat for, for everyone involved and, uh, you know, good to, good to have some family at every game. No, for sure. And um, you also got to play at the, uh, uh, the national level with the Atlantic under 17s Canada side. And there were some big names in that side too. Nathan McKinnon being one of them and uh, Blaze alumni, Justin Hashi as well. What was that like for you? That must've been a heck of an experience. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We got to um, play against, you know, the best players in, in the world for your age group. And, um, you know, we kind of being team Atlantic, we're kind of a small uh, region of the country and um, you know, the, we're not supposed to do as well as, as some of the other teams like Ontario and Quebec and, mm. and BC. And we were lucky enough to get in the top five, which is um, one of the best uh, performances for team team wow. Atlantic. And um, so it's been, it was good. It was, you know, great hockey, and um, we had some some good uh, good players come from from the Maritimes and and Atlanta, Canada. So it was it was good to part, be a part of. I think it's probably only a handful of games that we'd have played with Hashi, but do you remember anything about him at all? Because uh, he was with us for a few seasons. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we we played on that team together, and he was he was the captain. And um, uh -huh. and growing up, we I played for Nova Scotia against him when he played for New Brunswick. So there was a bit of a, a rivalry there um, in the summer for the, the U15 and U16 programs and, um, and then played junior against him for five years. Yeah. So um, he was in Cape Breton while I was in Moncton and uh, played many games against each other. And then um, he was in Shawinigan as well. So uh, definitely know him well. Hey, you play alongside Nathan McKinnon. I want to know about Justin Hashi. How about that <laughs> for, uh, yeah. for coming yeah. over to hockey, being a small, uh, being a small world and all. Um, but then, uh, you know, you became captain of, of Moncton as well. And anytime you get to stick a C on your chest, that's an incredible honor too, right? Yeah, absolutely. We had a, a very young team when I was 19 and, um, you know, I was lucky enough to be the captain and kind of had a, you know, three or four guys that kind of helped me out and, um, you know, it was, it was good for, you know, growing up and, and trying to lead a team and kind of leading on and off the ice and um, being responsible and kind of, you know, taking every day um, as a new day and, and make the most of it and, um, you know, kind of better myself as a hockey player and as a person at the same time. I mean, weirdly, geographically speaking, right? So the Ontario League, the, the Q and the Dub. They, they span a couple of different provinces, right? And uh, and the Q, no exception, obviously, Quebec being, I think, geographically the biggest. You were two, two and a half hours away from home in Moncton. And then in your senior year, I think it was, you get traded to uh, Rwanda, Naranda. And that's, I think, 18 hours, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which for yeah. uh, which for Blaze fans is the equivalent of Coventry to Warsaw in Poland. That is a heck of a change of scenery. What was that like as, a, uh, as an experience? I, I guess kind of... Um, because you're, you're, you're on guy still, right? That was, uh, I, I guess, helped you uh, grow and, and wake up to pro hockey. Because that was yeah, a good absolutely. prep for that. Um, yeah, like going from two hours away to, I think I, um, when I flew there, um, I got treated at Christmas or just after Christmas in the new year. And um, so you basically fly from Halifax to Montreal and then uh, Montreal is an hour and a half flight up to Rouen, which was seven hours drive north of Montreal so it was cold um it was kind of in the middle of nowhere uh northern Quebec and um 
but you know, a huge hockey town. And, um, mm. you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity that I made the decision to kind of go up there. And, um, I had one of my really good friends from Halifax that, uh, that was playing on the team and, um, they were kind of an older team and kind of just, you know, embrace the change and, and kind of go for the, for the best. And, and, uh, yeah, it was a great opportunity. It kind of, you know, broadened my horizon a bit and, sure. um, and we kind of made a little bit of a playoff run, which was, which was good as well. Would your role have been a lot different between the two teams then, between Moncton and, uh, and the Huskies? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, going into the playoffs for the Huskies, we were, um, we kind of traded for a couple guys and we made more mm -hmm. of like a shutdown, um, third line that kind of played against the other team's top line. And, um, we were kind of bigger bodies that could skate and get up the ice and play well defensively as well. And, um, you know, kind of that two way game. And, uh, so you, you kind of played a little bit less, but in more of a, you know, succinct role. And, um, yeah, it was kind of a, a good experience that way. It's interesting that role because I mean, recently it, it, it's changed a little but back maybe 10 years ago the queue was really run and gun wasn't it so to to really have that kind of structure that you'd see I guess more in North American hockey than over here because of the depth to have a top and I guess a bottom six um were, were those roles kind of a little bit more defined when you were there yeah I, I found um especially in Moncton you were seeing it um with Halifax and um Nathan McKinnon Jonathan Drouin and all these high-end players um you you kind of saw that you know teams were kind of trying to shut down these top end talents so um especially when it comes to playoffs you kind of have to play that um you can't really play that running gun some teams can't mm -hmm. and um in order to beat you know the high end talent and so um you know i kind of fit that in mold a little bit in in uh in the playoffs and when i get a little bit older and uh work or playing on a team that was trying to go for it so um, but it was good, you know, I, I could skate pretty quick and, you know, to play against these guys every night and, um, you know, you learn a lot and, um, you know, sometimes it's not as pretty as you want it to be, but it's definitely <laughs> a lesson and, um, you know, something to work towards. No, for sure. It's funny, isn't it, Stu? Because I mean, this year and a couple of years ago, when when um, Marco Valorant came over, he he came out of the queue too, um, very much a, a flashy goal scorer. But then you think five years ago, we had Carl, was it Carl Lazon? Stu, he came out of the queue and he was very flashy. And that was the type of player that, you know, you saw make their way over here, wasn't it? And now, uh, you know, guys like Ryan are, are built a little different. Yeah, we, we've typically seen a lot of that from like guys from Quebec, usually uh, maybe the more flashy guys. And you can even go back to some of the guys like for Manchester and Nottingham, like David Beauregard, mm -hmm. who've come out and have been those kind oh, yeah. of goal scoring wingers, the, the kind of things. But, you know, players... Players have different roles and, and suit different areas. And and Ryan, you 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 after you had your success in the queue, you uh, you turned pro and you you signed a contract straight in the AHL, which must have been a a, a great start to your pro career. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I got when I got traded at nineteen to to Rouen, I came back as a as an overage player at twenty, and um, you know offensively, I I had a pretty good year, and um, like I said, I was known for more of a shutdown kind of third line guy, but kind of offense kind of came through that year and um, had the opportunity to go play pro and kind of didn't really think twice about it. I was always the thinking highly of going, going to school at that time and um, kind of weighing different options and um, decided to sign that American league deal and, and kind of go to Ottawa's training camp that, uh, that fall and um, kind of start my pro career. So great experience of getting, you know, an NHL training camp and then a, a, some AHL games. But you split split your time between two teams because it was Binghamton in the AHL and is it Evansville in the in the ECHL? Well, do you think that first year was a success for you, like getting some time with two teams, lots of points, getting on the board? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think it kind of worked worked well. I kind of went to training camp uh, for a month in Ottawa and then kind of spent a week in in Binghamton and. Um, you know, they were an older team. They were kind of, they signed a lot of vets and, um, you know, I had a really good training camp, but they just said like, go down for a little bit and um, play and put up some points and kind of, you know, do you for a bit. And then, you know, you'll be back here. And that's what it was. I think it was, you know, I played about 10 games or a couple of weeks 
in Evansville in my first year and um, spent about five months in, in Binghamton and learning from, you know, guys that were playing in the NHL now. So it was, uh, it was definitely a great experience, met some really good people and uh, kind of, you know, it was a good way to start my, my pro career. And uh, Ed mentioned about change of scenery before. I mean, you've got Binghamton, which is upstate New York, and then Evansville, you know, Midwest Indiana. That's uh, two pretty different scenarios there to kind of try and adjust and play your first year of pro hockey. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, the fan bases were different. The rinks were different. The game was different. Everything was really different. So, um, but, you know, I... I love my time in, in Evansville as well. And kind of, they were kind of growing the game and in, in, um, in the Midwest and um, you know, the, the rink was beautiful. Um, guys on the team were great. And, um, and it was a good kind of spot to kind of, you know, massage myself into, into my pro career. And um, you know, I had some success there and um, as a group as well. And, and lucky enough that, uh, you know, um, you know, gave myself a call, uh, call up up to uh, Binghamton. How difficult is it to settle when you're in that sort of environment? Like, so you, you've got the AHL deal, you're down with, you know, with, you're getting some game time with, with Evansville and you're thinking, well, are you going to go back? Do you, how do you, how does that play in the mind of a, of a pro hockey player when it's your sort of first year wondering where you're going to end up? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, there's some, you're asking yourself a lot of questions sometimes and, um, and sometimes your role is different on, on both teams. Um, you know, I was playing a little bit of wing when I was in Evansville and, um, you know, played mostly center when I was in the American league. So, um, you know, you're definitely, but at the end of the day, you just got to take every day, like it's a new day and, and make the most of it. And, um, you know, work hard on the ice and off the ice and in the gym and, um, you know, your next game kind of just, you know, kind of put your best foot forward and, um, you know, lucky enough that, you know, that worked out. I was kind of, you know, um, starting to, you know, find my groove. And um, we were actually in, in Alaska at the time and um, on a road trip. And we were flying back to Evansville and through St. Louis. And I got the call to get called back up to Binghamton and, you know, five hour time difference. And, um, and, you know, I'm playing my first American League game. So it was, it was definitely, a, you know, a whirlwind, but uh, that's what hockey's all about. Yeah. You talk of, uh, of making the most of it. Your following year, you, uh, you spent some time with Reading and uh, 51.72 games is certainly making the most of it. Um, is that a, a successful year for yourself in Reading and, and for the team as well? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, you know, off the ice, I, I met some really good friends and, um, you know, gone some some of the guys' weddings and been in wedding parties and stuff. So uh, off the ice, it was success. Obviously, you know, Reading's not the best place to live. Um, you know, when you're when you got teams in Florida and South Carolina and, you know, those guys are golfing all the time. And <laughs> we're kind of more of a industrial town. But, um, you know, I loved it. It was it was great. Um, our team was good and our coaches were good. Their fans, um, you know, supported us and, um, you, we, uh, yeah, it was overall, it was a good year. And that's, that's the kind of reason why I was like, you know what, I want to sign back here. And a lot, we had a good core coming back my third year and, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So it was a, a couple of seasons with, with Reading and you had, and you were made the playoffs both years, uh, and, you know, good points total regular season as well. That's sort of kind of cracked it. And I think in both, both the regular season game the, you, that you played, um, you were sort of tied with points with Brampton one year for second place. And the, the year after, there was only two points that separated first and third in the in the division. So it was a, a really tight, competitive conference. How was that like to play in night after night? Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, it was never an easy game. It's not one of those, you know, when you're playing a 72-game season, you you know, those Sunday games, you hope that it's, you know, you can kind of get your two points and get out of there. But um, every game from, yeah, like you said, Brampton, Manchester, um, New Hampshire was in, in the league as well. And they were a great team and just a bunch of heavy teams that, you know, weren't making it easy on yourself every night. So, um, yeah, it was it was competitive. And um, like you said, it was it was hard to make the playoffs. And if you did, you you know, you're one or two points away from, you know, leading the, leading the division. So we definitely had a very competitive division. And I think that helped me and our team, um, 
throughout the season and, and they're in our careers. And that, uh, that last year, you ended up, you got a, a call up back to, to Binghamton, um, but it wasn't the Binghamton that you were there previously because it was a different organization. So familiar surroundings, but not. Yeah, absolutely. So they were uh, the New Jersey Devils organization at that time. And um, yeah, it, it, you know, it was, it was funny because, you know, you walk into the room and you know where everything is because you were there a couple of years before, but um, you know, the logos are all different and everything's kind of different, but it's the same kind of, you know, rink and town and everything. And um, you know, guys were different, but um, yeah, but then again, it was, it was kind of easy to know where things were and um where I was staying and what the restaurants were to, to go and eat and stuff like that. So it was definitely, that made it a bit easier. Do you think that kind of familiarity or comfort really helps players, particularly when they're, you know, maybe thinking about moving further away? Does that, is that something that sort of plays in, into your mind when you're making those sorts of decisions? Yeah, I think it helps, um, you know, just um, in terms of, like I said, just in terms of, you know, your favorite restaurant or, or things that you like and, and dislike, and you kind of make your decision off that. And, um, you know, for me, it was, it was easy. I had, I had a car there. I had a car there and um, I knew where the grocery stores were and I knew uh, that kind of thing. So it was, it would made it a little bit easier for the, for the couple months that I was there. Well, I'm sure if you ever need any pointers, Ed will be able to show you to the golf course and the grocery store. at least. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Golf course number one, then the grocery store yeah, second day. Exactly, exactly. What did um, what did Binghamton go from? Did it go from the Senators to the Devils then? They did, yeah. So um, um, the Senators moved back to Canada after that, and then New Jersey sure. kind of came in, and um, yeah, they've had a they've had a long history of American League hockey for for about twenty yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't I, I it's so easy to lose track with who's affiliated to who because there was so like for so long I think it was Albany that was um that was New Jersey's uh affiliate yeah yeah yeah, yeah. easy to lose track <laughs> yeah it changes all the time <laughs> no it does it's, it's, it's weird isn't it in some ways because if you think of I don't know um soccer particularly um NFL a little bit in baseball like um, in the major leagues anyway the, the teams pretty much stay put don't they like you know, you don't really have that move around, but I guess that filter down into the minors, it's, it's uh, I guess, needs must. Yeah, I think it just depends on development and location and um, ownership and, and, and that kind of thing and, and how that yeah. gels. And the other thing that's funny as well, I, I'm going off on a tangent here, is um, different NHL teams treat their affiliates different, right? So you said in in the first Binghamton that you had, there it was a lot of older guys, a lot of vets that maybe were trying to push for the colder. Uh, but some teams use it very much as a uh, as a development system um, to have a real good look at the guys before you know they maybe get promoted up. Yeah, absolutely, and um, yeah, it, I think it depends on 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 that young crop and um, coming in and and how much playing time they want to give you know those prospects, and um, and also depends on on the ownership. Sometimes the NHL team owns the American League team, so yeah. they kind of can do what they want in terms of who they bring in and. Sometimes that American League team has an independent owner. So at the end of the day, they want to kind of win as well. So um, sometimes it's it's a little different, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And speaking of a little different, so you did something that not a lot of guys have done. I mean, there's a couple of names um, that have done this. But you played pro and then decided at some point, you know what, I, I think I'm, I'm going to go down the education route and still play. Talk to us about that decision, um, my friend, because uh, pardon the expression, it's a little unusual. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it's definitely, I think it's, you know, a lot of people don't make that decision just because it's so hard and, um, you know, you get in the mix of, of playing pro hockey and, you know, I, like there's, there's a lot to like about playing pro hockey and, you know, the travel and play games and, and, you know, the competitive fire. And, um, so after my third year, I kind of, you know, was thinking of going to overseas and, and play somewhere in Europe. And, um, and then I kind of, thought to myself I was like well that might still be there when I'm done and if I can kind of um, bang out my degree in, in three years and um, go back to school and get that in my pocket and and kind of you know after after that I can kind of do what I want so I think it was just a decision to say hey I might go to Europe and I was like if I'm going to go to Europe I might as well get the degree beforehand and sure. um, had an opportunity to still play um, a couple of years there and and kind of develop a little bit in, in 
in hockey as well. So, um, yeah, it was just uh, an opportunity that kind of presented itself. And I was like, you know what, this might be the smartest thing in the, in, you know, yeah, down yeah. the line. Yeah. I'll, I'll, no, I mean, Stu works in education for his day job. Um, you know, we, we've been around the mill a few times, so we, we know that hockey, you only get to play for so long until, you know, you can't do it anymore. You've got to think of the 30, 40 years afterwards where you've got to do something that doesn't involve hurling around a frozen pond at hundred miles an hour. So no, absolutely. And, and yeah. as well, I think, I think I read somewhere cause you went to McGill, right. And we'll talk about McGill in a minute, but um, you know, the, the American league and in, in the coast is, is a heck of a grind. It's a long season, the playoffs, if, and you went to the playoffs, I think pretty much every year that you played pro that's a, a, a lot longer than we have here in the UK in terms of a playoff. It grinds that body down as well. Doesn't it? Particularly when you take into consideration junior and et cetera. So switching over to to you sports you you have to sit a year right because you've you've played professional hockey you, mm -hmm. i think the rule is you play a certain quota of games then you have to sit a year and i think you, you you can sometimes sit two if i if if i'm not much mistaken um so was that a bit of a blessing in disguise that you you could let the body heal up after all those games and and kind of get that first year of study to acclimatize yourself back to yeah. life in the classroom yeah absolutely you kind of hit it on the head there um you know i it, i played five years of major junior and and then you know played I think my second year pro I played every game so it definitely takes a toll on your body and you know playing 80 games and you know the bumps and the bruises that you kind of are you know the wear and tear that you've been playing through for for so long it was kind of a blessing in disguise to kind of you know get into school and um, I was still able to practice and, and mm -hmm. be around the guys and, and be in the room and everything like that but I wasn't playing um and, you know, I can focus a little bit more on school. And since I, you know, it took that, you know, four year break of, of not taking any classes. So, um, yeah, it kind of worked out well. And, and, you know, I was in the gym all the time and kind of rest the body a bit and get ready for uh, my, my, uh, the next year. I mean, the, the setup at McGill as well, sounds, sounds crazy. I mean, the school has been around since the mid 1800s. Um, did you feel kind of the history and, and was that kind of part of the reason you decided to go there for school? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, it's, uh, it's a very well world renowned, uh, university mm -hmm. and, and they have a really good hockey program with a, you know, a long list of alumni and, um, you know, from coaches in the NHL to, you know, guys that played in the NHL to scouts and, and that kind of thing. And, um, when I went and visited, it was just, you could tell the buildings and the character and, you know, the history involved in the school, it kind of, you know, really kind of pulls you. And, um, you know, I knew a couple guys from junior that went to the school and, um, you know, kind of picked their brain a little bit while I was playing my last year. And, um, and yeah, I just kind of Montreal's a, you know, a wicked city and, um, you know, a lot to do. And um, so it was kind of a no brainer for me. And, yeah. And um, there's some links with the Elite League there as well, because your coach was Liam Helis, right? And a young coach, um, but he played his uh, his final year of pro over in Fife. So um, what was what was he like as a coach? Because I remember him as a player. He was yeah, very absolutely. good. Absolutely. Absolutely. He was a really good player. Um, you know, he kind of came in um, unexpectedly as, as the head coach. And um, but, you know, he was, you know, he's very similar in age to me. So, you know, he's kind of more of a friend and um, but he was great for me and um, kind of, you know, was able to listen and, and, need, and knew what I wanted and what I needed and um, kind of took that team and, and kind of did really well in his, in his first year there. So um, it was it was great to meet him. I knew lots before. And um, when he came back from Fife um, as the assistant coach, it was it was great to see him on the bench. And then, and the, uh, um, I guess a more close to home uh, alumni is Nate Halbert, uh, who signed up for the Blaze this year. We had him on the podcast a few weeks ago. Um, what's Nate like? What what can we expect from him on the ice? Yeah, so um, I was lucky enough to be his roommate for two years at oh. school. So um, you know, I know Nate, you know, really well. So um, yeah, he's you know a good, you know, he's a, he's a great guy and good skater and. Um, you know, he does, he keeps the puck out of the net a lot and, um, you know, he loves to jump in the rush. So um, he's your prototypical Canadian defenseman two way. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's going to be fun to go over there with him. Uh, I guess you, you sound like you, and you look like you've got that relationship where you, uh, uh, you can bust each other's chops a little bit because Stu and I were busting his chops because he was born yeah. in Nottingham and Nottingham, yeah. uh, their hockey team are big rivals of the place. So yeah. it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, so it's good to see him on this side. So, 
Um, <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a good review. I like that. We'll take that. And then um, I, I, life took a bit of a weird turn, didn't it, for everybody? The, the pandemic hit, which would have been your your third year. Um, so how, how did that work with you sports? Did it get shut down? Um, I was I was trying to piece this together uh, prior to this. Yeah. So um, going into the year, we were thinking of starting in uh, January. So mm-hmm. um, we were we all came back and started practicing. And um, for me, it would have been in my uh, it was my final year. So um you know I was hoping for something to happen and um and then we started practicing for the first month and then kind of you know they they announced that we're we're not going this year and which was a huge blow and um you know kind of just took some time focused on school and and was able to skate and work out and I wanted to make sure that I finished school this um this year and, and kind of not let it drag on anymore so um you know, I was thinking of maybe, you know, continuing to play hockey and in, in January, but uh, wanted to finish school. And um, so it was, it was tough to kind of not know that it was your last game when it was. And, but uh, you know, it was, uh, it was definitely a, you know, a good decision to go back there. I've got to say, I'm going to hand over to Stu in a sec, but you've, uh, you've come up with a lot of why stuff for, uh, I mean, you're younger than me. I mean, I'm, I'm in my early thirties Stu, uh, just one or one or two years, uh, one or two years younger than me, clearly, as you can tell. Um, so, so to be that guy in that room that's played a few years of pro hockey, and uh, I guess everyone was a little bit younger than you, your, your role must have been pretty interesting. Yeah, Miguel. absolutely. And absolutely. And kind of, um, you know, you kind of come in as a guy that's, you know, you don't know every, anyone yet, but you kind of have a little bit of experience and kind of pick the, or, you know, just sit down and, and chat with the boys and, and kind of, you know, tell them what you think and 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 you know maybe help them out and kind of be a leader in the room I know my first year even though I wasn't playing I was trying to you know help the older guys out because they were around my age and and kind of you know go through the process with them so um yeah so it was definitely but it was good for my development personally as well and individually and kind of you know take some time and kind of grow uh my game as well so it was overall it was really good cool Stu. I, I have to ask because it's it's the question that I ask to pretty much every every college person that comes over. So, what was your major? I was uh, economics and finance. Nice. Yeah. Slightly different from business. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, A little more then, specific, but uh, it's all the same thing, I think. Yeah. No. All, all good. And you and you finished up. Was it? Was the ability to with with the pandemic on? that focus on school, did that make sure that you did finish in that three years? Cause I know in the North American system, it can string out. It's not, it's not quite the same here as here in the UK. It's like when your three years is up, you're done and you leave. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, like, like you said, it was kind of, it was good for me to focus a little bit more on school. Um, when it was the pandemic, we weren't at, you know, at the rink every day. Um, so it was kind of just, you know buckle down and get it done I had to take some summer summer classes and and kind of for sure it so um like you said yeah blessing in disguise to kind of you know since we weren't playing hockey I was kind of able to get it done um on my time frame and and not let it linger a bit so it was good to good to get it and I guess as well with the um a little bit more time on your hands and, and and thinking lots of things over as we all were over the past 18 months you're thinking well where, where do I go pro? If, do I still, you know, do I still stay playing hockey? You know, so was there ever, you know, was the thought firmly, I'm going to go back to playing pro. Let's see what's out there once your college was finished. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, my last year, I think once the pandemic kind of, you know, took our last year away, you're kind of thinking about different options and, um, you know, getting that full-time job or um, going back to school or, or playing pro, but I think the longer it went, it was kind of like the more I just want to play hockey. So, um, you know, definitely, I think going into the summer, I was, you know, all, all kind of, you know, just wanted to play hockey and, and play games again. And I think that was the biggest thing for me and um, try to figure out what the best fit was. And, um, you know, I kind of came to the solution. It was Coventry and, and very excited about it. Yeah, and, and you mentioned before that, you know, sort of coming to Europe was in your thoughts earlier on in your pro career. So I guess the question, the next question is kind of threefold. Why Europe? Why Britain? And why Coventry? Yeah, um, definitely my, my, 
you know, experience playing in, in the East Coast in the American League, it is. It is a grind. And, um, you know, you're playing a lot of hockey with, you know, a decent amount of travel, and especially on, on the East side. And, um, and kind of just said, hey, you know what, like maybe it's just, you know, save the body a little bit. Maybe I can play a little bit more and, um, you know, kind of be able to travel a little bit. I, you know, I feel like I've played in a lot of the different states and from Florida to Alaska and, and all in between and, and maybe just try something different. So um, it definitely came, you know, to playing overseas. And then um, I've heard a lot of great things about the British League. And, and like you said, from old coaches to old alumni that uh, from the school and, um, and guys in Halifax that I grew up with that, uh, you know, a couple guys playing Cardiff and, um, you know, Nottingham and, and, and Fife. So um, kind of picked their brain on the league a little bit and, and kind of was all good and um, had an opportunity to when my, in my third year to play with Kevin Morris, who played in Coventry as oh, well. Yeah. So he was in my, uh, he was a roommate uh, in the American League in Binghamton as well. So, um, yeah, so I kind of picked up the phone, uh, you know, and called him and, and picked his brain on Coventry and um, he had nothing but great things to say. So um, definitely kind of wanted to connect the dots there and, and uh, you know, talk to talk to Danny and, and it was, you know, I thought it was a, a great opportunity for me. We'll have to see if uh, Danny has paid Kevin his agent's fees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, and I guess um, you've mentioned that you've had different roles on different teams, depending on that kind of situation. Have you spoken with Danny about what your role is going to be with Coventry and maybe what the fans will expect to see from you on the ice? Um, yeah, we've, we've talked about it a little bit. And um, obviously, you know, a long year, you, you know, things change. And um, But I'm kind of a person that, you know, can kind of do a little bit of everything. So um, I'm very versatile in a way where you know, I normally play center, but, you know, I can play every wing and or both wings and, and every position up front. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I'd say my best attribute is my skating and, and getting up and down the ice. And, um, yeah, so I kind of a little bit of both. Um, you can play that physical game, but I can also, you know, chip in offensively and, and play on the PK and play on the power play. So I kind of, kind of just wherever, wherever I fit, I fit and kind of, you know, if I can be a piece of that puzzle and, and kind of wherever I need to be. And, um, that's kind of, kind of where I, where I see myself and where I think Danny sees myself as well. So, um, we'll see, we'll see as the, as the season starts. Well, I think Ed will agree with the, the bench sizes as they are, mm. um, versatility, the ability to yeah. maybe play different lines, different situations, I think this year in particular is going to be huge for not just for the Blaze, but for a, for every team. You know, players are going to get injured. You're going to have to be flexible. So I think that's a, 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 going to be a huge benefit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing too, right? Because um, I don't know how much uh, uh, Kevin Morris or uh, or Kevin Noble or uh, or Johnny Curran as well, of course, because you played here with him uh, recently in, a, in, the, in the charity games there. Um, but we, we don't really have a... a, a a, a concrete feeder league you don't really have that sphl to the coast and then the coast the american league and you know all the way up to the nhl so when 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 guys kind of get hurt or suspended for long periods it, it can be tough so yeah yeah to have that ability to play you know in all situations scoring goals stopping them at the other end um that that's going to be uh, like gold dust to danny i'm telling you yeah absolutely and, and kind of just see where i fit and and how i build chemistry with you know whoever up front and and kind of go from there and, and, uh, you know, knock on wood that we, we stay healthy and, and, uh, we stay intact and have some depth and, and, uh, and yeah, see where it goes. I couldn't agree more. Stu, um, do you have anything else you want to chip in here at this point? No, I'm just, you know, I think we say this now on everyone we do, but it, it's getting a little bit closer to, <laughs> to guys flying over, getting in the city and then, you know, getting on the ice, you know, I've been in the Sky Dome um, past couple of weekends just just feel get nice to be back in there again and, and have you all over and play some hockey absolutely it's it's uh you know it's right around the corner and um i'm excited and kind of these are the days where you're just like okay now this is you know this is where i need to get over and and you're kind of counting them down um getting you know excited to be back and, and 
playing hockey and um, looking forward to it. It's like kid at Christmas time. You're counting the days until old Saint Nick comes down the chimney. Now, exactly. Ryan Penny, Ryan Penny, this has been awesome. Honestly, I, I've been really looking forward to this all week. And um, yeah, you've, you've, you've been great company. So thank you very much for joining us, man. Uh, looking forward to meeting you in the flesh. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, uh, thanks, guys. And we're it's uh, around the corner. So looking forward to it. And still, I'm looking forward to seeing you again in person as well soon, buddy. It's, uh, it's been a little too long. It's going to be wonderful. And Blaze fans. I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys too. And um, obviously, if, you, if you're not at the Skydome at any point, you know where the webcast is. Uh, so from, from Ryan, uh, myself and Stu and all at Blaze TV, thank you so much for joining us as always. And uh, hey, we'll see you very, very soon.